Hey, welcome back everybody. This video we are going to be talking about operators. So to kind of ride into this a little bit, the previous video we were talking about if statements. And inside of the if statement you put some kind of expression. And sometimes you want to be able to say if this value is less than this value, equal to this value, etc. Well, to do that, we need to have these operators less than, greater than, equal to. These are known as relational operators in C. You may also hear them as comparison operators. Another way you can think about this is that in the previous video, we were using Boolean va uh, variables or values, true and false. And you can kind of think of it as zero being false and one or anything else basically being true. And it was like kind of like this black and white spectrum. But what if we wanted to kind of change the spectrum and say what was considered true and false? That's kind of confusing, but let me just kind of explain. Let's say we wanted to make a variable to contain how much somebody liked pizza. <laughs> and we could say that the high is 10. And we could say that we're trying to determine if someone likes pizza. And we could say that anybody that has seven or higher on this scale likes pizza. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Anything past here would be considered true. Or, you know, you could just make this 10, you could make it, you can make it infinity. So basically anything that is greater than seven is considered true. So we still kind of have that true, false, black and white concept, but now we kind of expanded on it by enabling sections of this to be true and false rather than just true or false, right? Like you like pizza or you don't like pizza, but now we have a range. So a person who likes pizza, seven out of 10 likes pizza. A person who likes pizza, eight out of 10 likes pizza. And I know this example is like the most practical example you're probably ever gonna use in your life. <laughs> And 9 out of 10 is good, and 10 out of 10. Or we could just say anybody, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. Anybody above 7. By the way, why is 7 afraid of 8? It's <laughs> not how it goes. Why is 6 afraid of 7? Because <laughs> 7, 8, 9, get it? <laughs> oh boy. Well, in order to do this, we need these relational operators. And it's really simple, so it's not too complicated, don't worry. So to write this out, it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna say if, and then we'll just make some variable name, pizza rating, I guess. And if that's greater than the value six, we want this code block to execute. So this here is the operator. This is an example, and this is specifically the greater than. So it would accept seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, anything greater than six, and this will run. So this is just an example of one of the relational operators. Let's talk about some of the other ones. So let's get that one first. We have greater than, which looks like that. We have less than, which looks like this. Greater or equal to, and that's actually going to be a little bit different than what you're used to. So in math class, that would look like greater than or equal to. But in computer science, the way that's represented is a greater than and then an equal sign. And it kind of reads how it sounds, greater than or equal to. We also have a less than or equal to, which is very similar, less than equals. The last one is whether or not something is equal to something. So that would not allow for greater than or less than. It has to be exactly the same number. And that is actually two equal signs. And you have to remember that it's two, not one. The reason it's two is because if you think of what the individual equal sign is in C so far, this is used for assignment. So you would say X equals five. So this is the assignment operator. So instead of making this and this the same and just contextualizing uh, what the, the meaning is depending on what's around it, that would be a little bit more confusing. So the end result is that we have two equal signs. That makes a lot more sense rather than the compiler trying to figure out if you're trying to assign to something or if you're trying to see if something's equal to something. So we have the double equals. So to see this in action, it would be like this. Six is equal to six. 
that is true. Six is equal to seven is false. So if you wanted to be very specific, only the people that get in are the people who have a pizza rating of 10, exactly 10. Well, then what you would do is replace this value here, that looks terrible, with equals equals 10. And then someone puts in a value, let's say six, well, this would be false and this code block would be skipped and we would continue from below. So these are the important operators that you need to know about. There is one more thing you should know and that is in general, you can use this uh, exclamation mark, which is the negation operator, which is going to basically flip the true or false value of anything. So this could be applied to something in parentheses. So if you had some expression, uh, let's say likes pizza, or actually you don't even need the parentheses in this situation. Well, you could put that exclamation mark there, which means does not like pizza. So it basically flips the value. So if likes pizza is actually true, when we put this exclamation mark, it would have to be false. It gets a little confusing, so don't worry too much about it. But the reason I'm calling that out is because there's actually another one you should know about, and that is not equal, which looks like this. And it's odd because you actually only have one equal sign here. So you just gotta remember that. It's one equal sign if you're using the negative. It's two equal signs if you're using no negative. And that works because when this equal sign is connected directly to that exclamation mark, it's easy to tell that this is a different operator than just the equal sign. So we don't have to worry about it. But it does kind of confuse me sometimes because like, why does it have to be one, ex one equal sign when it could be two? I don't know, it's confusing. So just memorize that one equal sign goes here when we are doing the not equal. Now I'm gonna bring up something known as precedence here and I'm just gonna to touch on it a little bit. So I'm gonna give you a little example. As you build more complex expressions, you have to understand precedence of these operators. So for example, if we did this, it's greater than three plus three. This is a little bit confusing because you could think of it as this plus three or you can think of it as this, where pizza rating is greater than three plus three. Which one actually happens is dependent upon the operator precedence. So in this situation, the plus sign has a higher precedence, which means it happens first. So this is actually going to get evaluated to pizza rating greater than six, which will then ultimately be evaluated to true or false depending on the value of pizza rating. And that, that makes sense because if you think about it, if you did pizza rating greater than three, let's just say it was true, and then you had plus three, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> I mean, you can think of it as one plus three, but it just doesn't make as much sense to me. <laughs> it would make sense to do the, the math operators first and get a, a value to then compare against. So that's just a taste of operator precedence, which uh, you're going to get a lot more of as you do see, so pay attention to that. <laughs> Thank you guys. That's all I got for this video. In the next video, we're going to be applying some of this stuff to a really cool software game that we're going to make. It's going to be really cool. I mean, it's not like GUI, shoot 'em up or anything, but it's still pretty awesome. All right, check you guys then. Peace.